What's up guys? Hey, today I want to talk to y'all about getting into the fire service, joining the fire service, what it takes to become a firefighter here in the state of Texas. I've had a few questions on this, so hopefully I can give y'all all y'all's answers, so stay tuned. Open your eyes, what can you see around? Wind of the open sky, over the siren sound. So first off, for joining the fire service here in the state of Texas, there are two ways to do it. You can either do it through volunteer or you can do it through a college such as Lone Star, San Jacinto College, and so on and so forth, Texas A&M. There's two different certifying entities in which you can become a Texas firefighter. One is through the State Firemen and Fire Marshals Association, and the other one is through the Texas Commission on Fire Protection. If you're wanting to go paid, and you do want to be able to make this a career possibly, then you need to go for the TCFP Commission, or the Texas Commission on Fire Protection Commission. You can volunteer with the TCFP, or you could be paid while with the SSFMA, or Fire, uh, State Firemen and Fire Marshals Association, you will only be a volunteer. The training is identical either way you go. One is not easier than the other. Just one allows you to be strictly a volunteer, and the other one allows you to be either or. Now, as I said, there's two ways that you can achieve this certification. You can go to a fire department who has their own academy, their own TCFP approved academy. A lot of fire departments have their own academies, but not all of them are TCFP. So you have to find out which ones in your area are have a TCFP academy. The other way is by going to, like I said, to one of the colleges, which is you're going to end up coming out with an associate with you, and you can go get your TCFP through that. So there, there's pros and cons to both. The, the pros that I see about going to college is that when you come out, you can already have a degree. You'll go ahead and go get your uh, national registry or your emergency medical technician basic. So upon completion of your college classes, you'll be eligible to go straight into a fire department to be able to be hired on. Some fire departments, such as Houston Fire Department here, they require you to still go through their academy before putting you on a truck so or an engine or whatever you're going to be on. So you can do it that way. Other departments will just bring you on and they'll put you through your uh, new hire new hire entry level program and you'll be riding and working. The other way, which is the way that I went, and to me it's, I feel like that it's one of the better ways to go, especially if you've never done it before, and that's to find a volunteer department that has their own TCFP academy. Because by going through them, the department, most of the time, will end up paying for you to get this certification. They're not going to pay you directly, but they're going to pay for the certification. The good thing is about this is so most departments usually require that upon completion that you give them about a year's worth of service. Uh, I know my department does it where they require you to stay a year, volunteer for them, and you only have to do 24 hours a month of ride time which is two 12 hour shifts. Not that hard to maintain. The benefit to me about going through a volunteer department this way and getting this the certification is that not only do you get the training and the certifications from it and the education from it, you're gonna get real world experience from it. You're actually gonna be on an engine, on a truck, and you're going to go to the calls that normal everyday firemen and EMS go to so you'll actually get a good taste of what it is to be a first responder to be a firefighter to really tell if it's really the right course for you most everybody I know who does actually make it through a volunteer program and volunteers 
a lot of them do stick around and then a lot of them do go and be paid. Just so you know though, the dropout rate of when someone goes to these academies is very high. My academy, myself, we started at like 42 people, we graduated 16. So it is tough, it is grueling, both mentally, academically, physically, they find ways to try to make you quit. And it's not to try to be mean, but it is to find out of, if you're going to quit, quit early. Don't quit later. Because there are times when you end up in situations when quit is not an option. You know, quit could mean your life or your partner's life, you know. So it's something to look at. Um, so like I said, for me, I went through a volunteer fire department to be able to get my certification. It was a fun program. It was grueling. There was times I questioned, what am I doing here? But if you can stick to it and hold to it, it is a very rewarding career. Um, and it's not to say that the college aspect one is not a good way to go. Like I said, one of the best, best things that you're going to get out of there is that you're going to come out with a degree, which puts you ahead of some people. You're going to get all the education from it. To me, the only thing that lacks in that is that you don't get a lot of real world experience. Now, if you're doing that and once you get your certification, you can go straight to a volunteer department and start volunteering while you look for a department to get paid at. But anyway, guys, but for any of those of you who are looking to try to join, the path in which you need to do it is if you're just wanting to do volunteer, I would recommend you go get what's called an EMR, which is your emergency medical responder. Then you go get your TCFP. This is going to go through the volunteer side. Um, if you can do those two things, that's going to really, really help you. Like getting the EMS side in and just at least getting an EMR. Ideally, you'd be better for you to have an EMT basic more than an EMR, but a lot of departments usually only require something like first aid, CPR, or an EMR. Uh, for me personally, to be able to help you, to actually help the people that you're going to help, I'd recommend you getting an EMT basic first. Go get your EMS out of the way, because that's going to be one of the more academically challenged than the, any of the other ones. Once you get that, take that. And, and the truth is, if you get that even before you go to college or go to school, those will that, that will transfer over into college credits towards your degree in a fire science and technology program here. Uh, but then if you're just going to the academy, well, then that means once you complete the academy and you get your TCFP and you're all good, well, then you're ready to go be paid anywhere here in the state of Texas. But definitely... Go get your EMS out of the way. After your EMS, go knock out your fire. And whether you're going to go in through a college where they're going to work you, or you're going to go through a volunteer department, they're going to work you. Either way, you can't go wrong by going and getting your EMS first and then trying to tackle your fire. So with that, if y'all have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more updated content that's to come. Thank you. Y'all take care.